And welcome back to another episode of the Association Spotlight Series. I'm Lake Morehouse, and today our series is kicking off a little bit of a sub-series with our legislative shorts. We have the legislature in session at the moment here in West Virginia, and I'm joined by our CEO today of the West, West, West Virginia Behavioral Health Care Providers Association, Mark Jernan. Mark, thank you for joining us to uh, sit down and talk real quick about some legislative issues. Yeah, thanks, Lake. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, so today I think we were going to touch on uh, the, the issue of IDD waiver rates and in the state and uh, kind of the history of that a little bit and what's going on there currently. Sure. Well, you know, many of our members deliver services to people with, uh, with IDD or intellectual and developmental disabilities um, through what's called the, um, the IDD waiver. It's a, it's a Medicaid program that is a, it's a, it, it waives the regular rules of Medicaid to serve this subpopulation. Um, and, and I think what we're talking about here, to be more specific, are people which were historically um, individuals with mental retardation. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we've moved past that term. Uh, I'm just unsure if the general population understands really what we're talking about when we talk about people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. But as, you know, as, as I grew up, you know, we, we were talking about people with mental retardation. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, we've moved past that. We really want to be focused on the, the individual first and mm -hmm. not their disability second. But we want to be really clear when we're, when we're talking with, with our elected officials and our legislators about the population that we're, we're, we're talking about. Because in my mind, you know, this is the population that is, that, that is a citizenry and as a community that we really want to take care of. And these mm -hmm. are the individuals that, that uh, many times are not capable of taking care of themselves. So we've put aside some, some state and federal dollars uh, to help care for these folks um, as they age and, and, and get later on in their lives. Sure, and a lot of these folks, uh, as we know, re require high, high amounts of care, truly. And uh, the issues have been the, the rates of the, the employees and the workers here in our, in our workforce. It's a, it's a tough job, and, and currently those, those rates might not reflect the, uh, the hard work that these, these people put in. Right, we're you know we're taking care of people 24 hours a day, um, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You know because you did it. Mm -hmm. You you were a direct care worker in your college days, yep. and you cared for some folks with uh, with intellectual disabilities. And you know West Virginia addressed those rates back in 2011. Mm -hmm. They made a significant uh, improvement to those to those uh, to those rates, and we we're able to pay people more and retain them. Unfortunately, in the last, this is 2023 now, in the last 12 years, um, there's been a 31% rate of inflation. And we've not significantly addressed those rates. Now we have had a 5% rate increase once or twice. So, but that still leaves us about 18 or 20% behind what, what we think it should be. Mm -hmm. And in that period of time, not only I think I believe even if we kept up, we'd still be in a in a little bit of a bad position, because we've seen COVID and we've seen a workforce crisis that we've that's been looming for a long time, that just doesn't affect direct care, but is attract it is affecting every industry across the state. You can't turn on the news or the TV or or talk to anybody without talking about the workforce crisis. Sure. Yeah. It's uh, it, what the rate is now. You currently for for folks that might not understand for direct care. Well, right now you, we get paid on a on a per unit basis, and, mm -hmm. and we're talking about fifteen minutes at a time. Sure, um, it's interesting that we bill that way because um, when we're taking care of people twenty four hours at a time and we're billing fifteen minutes at a time, it's not a real good fit. Sure, but right now I think it's uh, five dollars and seventy six cents per fifteen minutes. Okay, and uh, it might be seventy two cents, but we. There's a rate setting methodology that the state of West Virginia developed and they used back in, in, uh, in 2011. And, and what it does is it uses wage statistics from the Department of Labor and labor statistics from the federal government for West Virginia only. Mm -hmm. And it looks at one category, um, which is a health care worker. And you take that number off of the Department of Labor and Labor Statistics and you you plug it into one field in the in the spreadsheet, and it calculates out what the rate should be. Okay. And when you when you look at that, we're about a dollar and six cents on fifteen minutes behind. Okay. And uh, so roughly four dollars an hour 
um, on the rate is where we need to be. And, uh, and so that, that gets us back to where we'll be even with inflation. Sure, sure. That's, uh, and it's, this, is, this is really, really dire work and, and folks want, everyone I would think, wants the highest quality of care, but in order to get the highest quality of care, we have to have competitive rates for these people and have reasonable wages to live on. And, yeah, and this is what's so disheartening about our workforce crisis right now. Um, you know, we talk about money and we talk about workforce, but what we're really talking about is the quality of service to the individual. Mm -hmm. And we're really, you know, our industry is about serving folks in the community so they can go to church and they can go on dates and they can go to the movies and they can get out and get, get out and about. But that requires a, a, a staff member, a person to be with them. And as you know, a lot of times these facilities and these group homes are, are three beds. So they may have three individuals living together. And, uh, and if you lose a staff, then let's say you've got three staff that work in that home, but one staff is not there. And you have two people that need to go one place and one person that needs to go another place. Yep. And you end up with individuals not going to go anywhere. Yeah. And so then they're left stuck in that, in that home. And, uh, and that's not good for their mental health. It's not good for our mental health. We don't right. like being st no. staying. If it snows for a few days and we have to stay home, we don't get out, we get a little grumpy. Um, so we like to be able to get out and, and get out in the community, and so do they. They have those needs too. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, also it's, it can be dangerous for staff as well, and I've, I've experienced that in direct care as well, and it's three on one sometimes, which is extremely dangerous, as in three, three individuals with one, uh, with one staff. I mean, it, on, when people are calling off or just this total shortage of, of workers, it can be dangerous for everyone involved, and like you said, with, with routine and everything, a lot of folks, individuals uh, across the IDD spectrum are, are very routine, detailed oriented just like we are so when they right. get they don't get to do the things and the errands and the the activities that they get to do and like to do every day it, it it's a domino effect in the entire home and it's 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 tough yeah you're right i mean one aspect of uh of individual dis intellectual disabilities is the autism spectrum and mm -hmm. we know that that's a broad broad spectrum right but a lot of times people with autism are very routine oriented and so when they don't get to do what they're used to doing at that particular time then they don't have the social skills sometimes to act out in appropriate ways and they get frustrated. Mm -hmm. We would get frustrated, you know, even if we're not on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it's just, it just, it just magnified um, when someone is on the spectrum. All right, well, Mark, thanks. We're gonna keep our eye on this, of course, going through the session here and uh, appreciate your time today. And everyone hang tight for, uh, for more episodes coming up with the session and, uh, and stay tuned. All right, we'll All be right. back. All right, thanks, thanks Mark. Mark.